In Shortcuts a lot, there are a number of ways to align shapes. The most basic is called snapping. Snapping options are located in the View, Snap To menu, and there are a few options. Snap to Grid will snap the selected shape to the grid lines on the virtual mat, even if they're not displayed. The Objects Bounds option will snap the selected shape to the outside boundaries of other shapes. The Object Centers option will snap the selected shape to the center of other shapes. And Object Sublayers will snap the selected shapes to child shapes located inside other shapes. Now that's a lot of words and it might sound confusing, so let's see it in action to help understand this feature better. First I'll add a circle to the mat. I select the Circle tool, then click and drag. I'm also holding down the Shift key while I'm dragging so I get a perfect circle rather than an oval. Next, let's select the Rectangle tool and do the same thing. Again, I'm holding the Shift key down while dragging my mouse to get a square instead of a rectangle. As I drag the circle around, see these blue lines that appear? Those are the snapping guides. Right now, it's snapping to the grid lines. Let's align this circle in the corner of two snap guides and enable the grid by opening the document panel and selecting Show Grid and verify our circle is aligned. And indeed it is. Snap to grid can sometimes be a little too much snapping, so let's turn that off and we can see the snap to bounds and snap to centers options more effectively. Now as I'm moving the circle around, see how the blue snap guides appear when the right boundary of the circle is aligned with the left boundary of the square? Now the center of the circle is aligned with the left boundary of the square. And now the left boundaries of both shapes are aligned. As we continue to move the circle around, the snap guides appear at those same points of alignment. Naturally, you'll want to zoom in and out of your projects at different times, and Shortcuts A Lot offers a variety of options to do so. The first way is to hold the Option or Alt key for Windows and use the mouse wheel or a scroll action on your touchpad. You can also press Command and plus or minus to zoom in and out, and on Windows that would be Control plus or minus. Zoom options are also available in the View menu just above the Snap To submenu. There's also a zoom control at the bottom left of the status bar. And the numeric field here is editable, so you can type in a zoom level and press enter. There's also the zoom tool in the tools panel. When you select that, you'll see some additional buttons appear in the tool options bar up above. The first button zooms in. The second button zooms out. The third button will zoom to whatever you have selected and the fourth zooms out to the whole mat. Command and F, or Control F for Windows users, will zoom to fit the entire cutting mat to the window. When you have the zoom tool selected, you can also drag a marquee around an area to zoom to that selection. Once you're zoomed in, you might need to pan around a bit. The obvious way to do that is using the scroll bars on the bottom and to the right of the virtual mat. One neat trick is holding down the spacebar to temporarily activate the hand tool. With the spacebar held down, you can then click and drag to pan around your work area. There's also a dedicated hand tool on the tools panel. Let's select that, and then I can click and hold my mouse button while dragging to pan the workspace. Let's select the zoom tool and use the slider to zoom out. As in most applications, there's also undo and redo functionality. Oops, I deleted this circle. Oh no, how will I ever get it back? Like everything else we've covered in this video, there are a few ways. I can click the Edit menu and select Undo. If I really meant to delete it, I can click the Edit menu and select Redo to delete the shape again. And I can also use the typical Command Z or Control Z for Windows users to undo. Additionally, there are also undo and redo buttons on the toolbar. 